That's Mitch. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, so actually, what were, what were we discussing during the break? So a couple different supplements that there was questions about. Yeah, well, we were talking about um, some one one of the some of the negative connotations of creatine. Um, a lot of it really is just it, in the original methods. It was mostly just creatine monohydrate. It's not very stable in your body or in water. The pH balance is it, it goes bad really quick. So it turns into the byproduct of of creatine, which is the wasted creatine, and that's where it's kind of the water sitting outside the muscle cell, not really into where you want it. So. They've made up a lot of um, advancements as far as the absorption of creatine and make it more stable. So hydrochloric acid, magnesium chelate, ethyl ester, cryalkaline, some of that kind of stuff. So that way you can actually intake less creatine up front because you're not accounting for all the wasted creatine. So you're um, less chance of the side effects. You know, the, mo the most common side effect is probably uh, the calcium deposits, kidney stones and that kind of stuff. So, and that just comes from unabsorbed creatine. So. If it's got a better stabilizer, it absorbs better, you're gonna retain less water, you can use it longer, you're not gonna get the water tension, the bloating, and you can get all the benefits of muscular endurance, muscle cell volumizing, and that kind of stuff. And I think it's important for people to know also that there's, there's, uh, you know, I always say everything in excess is, is not good for your body, and I think that if your body can only take in so much, say, protein, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I mean, what's, what's the general for someone walking around at 200 pounds? That they should be able to take in the intake you know general rule of thumb i try to recommend about a gram per pound of total body weight um i think that's pretty reasonable as far as you're going to intake enough to maintain protein synthesis for for a long period of time and the more lean tissue you can maintain ultimately the, the faster your, your metabolic rate is going to be what about uh one of the things that i've been reading into and and uh, the way it was worded it was like the wonder drug or the wonder supplement to say to the general public you know, a lot of us here were somewhat directly or indirectly involved with the competition world with regards to health and fitness, but L-carnitine. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about L-carnitine. I know that's a product that Nutrition Zone carries. You know, L-carnitine, it's it was one that was really popular a long time ago, mm -hmm. and it kind of lost steam a little bit, and it's becoming more popular again. Um, to make it real easy for people to understand, it's just a fat transporter. It's transporting fatty acids to the muscle to be burned up as energy. So if you can, you know, if you're if you're maintaining muscle tissue and your body's releasing fats, it's going through lipolysis, releasing fats as energy, the carnitine is going to more effectively transport it over the muscle and turn it into energy for you. So would that make more sense for, for someone to take L-carnitine first rather than a fat burner or typically it's a combination of both? Um, a little bit. In general, I usually have people do like a combo of CLA L-carnitine first, you know, with their with their good diet needs and then you know, when it gets really down to it, they need to get that last little bit. We may consider throwing in a fat burner, but often I like to take all those compounds in the fat burner and do them separate and just try to get max volumes on them. Mm. You know, it kind of builds your own. Does one supplement typically complement the other? I know you, we talked about that stack where it's the, the protein, the, mm. the glutamine, and the other three that I'm drawing a blank on, but I mean, do they <laughs> typically- you, you yeah, skip right over them. Is that what I did? <laughs> is that what I did? <laughs> Um, but I mean, do they typically complement each other? Um, yeah, there's a few like CLA and L-carnitine complement each other really well. Mm -hmm. um, any type of like agnitine and um, and creatine, those two work really well off each other because you're increasing blood flow and cell volumizing, so you're getting that blood in a little bit more effectively. So there's some stuff that that complements each other. Are there any like common supplements that put together aren't a good combination? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of stuff you just start buying stuff yeah. and not realizing what it's doing to you when you combine them. Um, there, there is a few, usually a lot of people when they're doing like pre-workouts and fat burners, you know, you're getting a little bit of toxic levels on your, on your caffeine needs and that kind of stuff, adrenal fatigue, you know, that's going to in inhibit hormone production and that kind of stuff, you know, um, so in general, I, the biggest one most people combine that I recommend don't doing is protein and creatine. The protein is just going to slow the absorption of the creatine. You're just more likely to waste the creatine and get a little Now, is that not retention. taking it? like within the day or just not just taking not in the same period like in the same one a lot of people do like the creatine and protein after exercise right. i just might as well get it the creatine and beforehand do the protein after break you know, it those out those effects of the creatine are still working in your body through the remainder of the time now when someone's working out is there is there um an optimal time for them to take in that protein whether i mean should i be drinking protein before workout should i be drinking during or after so that kind of depends um for on it really depends on your schedule you know mm -hmm. if you have had a good amount of food in you and you had a pretty good solid high protein meal within you know two hours hour of working out you probably don't need to do any type of protein shake beforehand you mm -hmm. know just stick it to afterwards um 
and afterwards, yeah, you do kind of have a, a, what's called an anabolic window. I'm sure a lot of people have heard that. Um, and really all that is, is you can really just assimilate twice the amount of nutrients than you can in a normal environment. So that's why you're loading up on, you know, at least 25 grams of protein or so. Um, definitely, you know, after workout, get your carbohydrates in. I think that's one thing that a lot of people, um, they don't do. You know, they're just like, oh, protein only. You know, you still got to get you know, some good glycogen stores filled up again, so your body has energy. But what about for those people that are working out at night? I mean, I know I typically, I'm at the gym and I'm walking mm -hmm. out of there like at 9, 9.30. Does this still make sense for me at that, that point after my, my lifting to take in some, some carbs? Ultimately, yes. Mm -hmm. um, for real hardcore needs, you know, some people might not, just depending mm -hmm. on what, you know, your body composition needs are. But in general, you can eat a decent amount of carbohydrates after training and your body's not going to store it up into fat. It's going to go into... Um, muscle glycogen stores and get used for repair and recovery. Uh, I downloaded the Perfect Physique, that movie last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, caught a little bit of it last night. And one of it was a discussion with, with regard to fasted cardio versus not in the morning. Right. So touch on that a little bit. Um, fasted cardio, it <laughs> it's beneficial. Um, I know like in a lot of medical institutions, they definitely would go against it. Um, it, it, if it if done right, it can help out, but it needs to be short. I think some people are going too far, too long, or they're not doing it right for what their goals are. If you're trying to build muscle, you know, or whatever, um, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna want to go in fasted. But cardio wise, if you're going in depleted and you have some at least some BCAAs or some type of protein in you, at least minimal. Um, it, it'll help your body to utilize the fats better. The only downside I see to fasted cardio is when your body needs nutrients right away and you're not in protein synthesis, it's going to eat muscle because that's the quickest supply of nutrients. Your body wants to burn fat last. At but what if I'm intensity. taking like a form of casein protein right before I go to bed? Is that still in my system if I wake up in the morning and do fasted cardio? Probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, eight hours or so. No, and granted, you got about seven or eight hours of sleep. Now, you mentioned a anabolic window. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean five minutes after my workout 15 minutes after my workout i'd say you're in general i'd say you're good anywhere from 30 45 minutes okay you don't need to so i see some people rushing and panicking trying to get all that's that's oscar like, he's oh. making a shake on our last <laughs> it's closing. Yeah, no, right? it's closing i gotta get it so you know it's fine you, you got a good 45 minutes or so okay um i use instagram or i started to use instagram a couple years back with regard to fitness that's where i started to learn and everything else but i feel like now there's a lot on instagram that's not real anymore um, yeah. supplement companies and other other factors are getting hammered really mm -hmm. um is there certain things that you can look for on instagram that you just need to stay away from or some good supplement companies that are on instagram or should we just not be looking at instagram for, <laughs> you know use educated. instagram for if you need stuff for like motivation workout uh -huh. stuff you know stuff to kind of keep the drive up that's that's all fine and good but um the truth of the matter is a lot of those they don't look like that year round you know there's during the season where they're going through a lot of competitions and stuff they're doing a lot of photo shoots and they're saving a lot of these pictures and they're posting them year-round yes. and that's how they get paid you know and they're paying year-round to have these photo shoots done so they look perfect because of you know the photographer and their work and the time frame on which they took these photos and do people just need to understand that most of these people that are endorsing these products aren't really on these products they don't look like that because of these products <laughs> Absolutely. or they're taking other forms of right yeah yeah, supplements yeah, to say yeah. We'll you know supplements. <laughs> i usually tell people you know be wary of those ads in any of the magazines mm -hmm. you know those are owned by all the supplement companies right. so when you're seeing a four page like article slash ad hybrid thing right. be a little bit leery a lot of those really big names like i hate to put it out there but like muscle text and cell mm -hmm. cores and bsns and that kind of stuff i tend to veer away from it's really just you look at the ingredient list and there's 50 ingredients in there that I don't need in a protein. So know? what's the best way for someone who's, you know, again, that New Year's resolution or if that's even a word. What is it? That, just come, uh, come, come down to any of the Nutrition Zone stores. You know, come down. We go through a pretty good training process. Our staff's pretty well trained. You know, they're, I'm training them for three weeks to a month before they even take a customer. And we'll really take the time to lay out you know a basic framework of what your food should look like you know and what you should be using based on what your goals are and i think people need to understand that that's not the norm you go walk into supplement stores and they have no business trying to sell you something. oh no absolutely not like you go into gnc i mean you know they don't if you don't they don't look the part they might not know the part you know it's <laughs> It, it sucks to say they might be well informed, but and even from a price point, it doesn't make sense. And that makes no sense at all. Yeah, yeah nobody needs to pay a hundred dollars for a tub of protein. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I want to give both of you guys an opportunity to um, Michelle. You can start. Um, if somebody's interested in Fitzy Foods, where would where would they begin? 
Uh, you can visit our website, fitzyfoods.com. That's F like Frank, I, T, like fitness, but Z-E-E -E at the end. You can go to our Facebook, Yelp. I recommend Yelp. I think that's the best place because mm -hmm. you can actually read what other people think about the company. What does it help them with? Why did they choose us? Um, the one from yesterday was a really good review. Well, what day is it today? Today's Tuesday. Tuesday. All day today. <laughs> January 4th. Read that Yelp review. Yeah. We'll have to. <laughs> okay, now I will. We'll throw in our two cents. Right on. And go post a review. Yeah. I think you guys are Fitzy customers. Yeah, I think and so. And I so. don't <laughs> think we've written a review. No, we haven't, actually. We, I know. Right. We have to. You need to. We have to. This is our review right here. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, or come visit our stores. We have two stores in San Diego, but primarily most people, it's really interesting, are just choosing shipping to their house. One last so. point that you brought up before, Ryan, you, you give us your contact info, which I think is important. I love the fact that you guys open your kitchen for people that want to know where the food is made. And yeah, how the food come is on made. in. I think that's important. You know, I think whether it's Fisty Food, I'm assuming you're going to choose Fisty Food or any other organization, check out their kitchen. Let's see if they're an open book and check out how they operate. Yeah, one of the things we said, what are we going to do this year? I want to do videos behind the scenes so you guys can see that's what's great. going on. See? Got, your that's brain, great. got your brain thinking. There it is. There you go. You heard it here first, the four-hour live. <laughs> Fitzy hour live. Yeah, let's, not, let's not get crazy. Ryan, Ryan, what about you? You guys get, I'm down at uh, Nutrition Zone downtown or the location in Point Loma. Um, I'm actually going to be doing hours at both stores more often now, so you can find us down there. Uh, based on all the content today, both stores need you, my man. So oh, yeah. um, it's Come not, see me. It's not, it's get not, get it's your food, get your product. We'll be good. Good stuff, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if we'll, 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 we'll see you down the road on, on the air. Michelle, yeah. we will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you guys for, for tuning in. You've been listening to The Quarter Hour Live on ESPN 1700. When we get back, we'll be talking with Dr. Rodriguez, Becca of Latina Strong Foundation, and Jeff of Elite Training La Jolla. Thanks, guys.